Hey there, in this video we are going to look at long division part two. So we're going to go a little more in depth and what happens when we don't just have a simple conclusion or a simple answer where everything works out and we're left over with zero once we use all of our digits in our um, dividend. So what I want to go ahead and look at is our first kind of set of three common scenarios that you may see with long division. So the first one is simple conclusion. So when the last digit is brought down and the number created can be evenly divided by the divisor, the result is written above the quotient line and the number above the line is now the correct quotient. So we saw that in our previous video where we ended up, for example, here, 24 minus 24 um, gave us zero, a remainder of zero is what that's called. So that eight times three that we ended with was exactly what we needed because this 24 was divisible by three. And so when we did eight times three and we got 24, we subtracted it and we got zero. That meant, yes, that's it, we're done, we're finished. We've filled in all of our digits up here and we left over um, a remainder of zero, okay? So that is a simple conclusion. That's what we've seen previously. So another way we could potentially see a division problem end would be the last number of the dividend is not evenly divided by the divisor. So this example right here, they originally started with 476 divided by 136. And when they did that, they ended up with um, zero for the first digit because four is not divisible by 136. Then they brought down the seven essentially and they looked at 47. 47 is not divisible by 136, so they brought down the next number, or in other words, looked at those first three digits together, 476, and divided that by 136. And that does go in three times. So they took this three and they multiplied three by 136. And when you multiply the three by 136, you get this 408, that's right here. So they subtracted 476 minus the 408 and they ended up with 68. Now you'll notice that was originally the end of the um, problem in the sense that it was the last digit to fill in. But you'll notice they did not stop there because as you can see, that was not the end of the problem. They did not end with zero like we did in our simple conclusion answers that we saw in the previous video. So we had 68 here. So what we had to do was we had to put 0, 0.0 so that we could continue with this problem and see what came after that decimal point because three was not correct. Three times 136 was 408, it was not 476. So it was not a perfect answer. 136 did not go into 476 an even number of times. So we bring down that zero that we just put there and now we have 680. So now we take 680 and we take 136 and we see, okay, does 136 divide into 680? It does, it divides in five times. So five times 136 would be 680. And when you subtract those, then we are left with zero and we've filled in all of our spots up top in the quotient line. So that's how we know, okay, we finished, we are done, 3.5 is our final answer. So sometimes that's what it looks like. If that wasn't a zero down here at the bottom, we would continue to add another zero, bring it down, and then continue to divide again if that was not a zero down there at the bottom. Our third possible situation that we may see is what we call a repeating or recurring decimal. So if there is a repeating pattern of numbers that cannot be evenly divided by the divisor, which creates a quotient with infinite digits, it goes on and on and on, and it will never stop because it's just going back and forth. Maybe it's point for example, like we see here, 0 0.63, 63, 63, 63, 63, and we know that it just keeps going over and over and over again. Or maybe it's 0 0.1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and the same number over and over again. Or maybe it's three digits repeating. It could be a variety of uh, possibilities, but if we see that repeating pattern, then instead of writing a never-ending number, we mark the repeating pattern in one of the common markers we can see here, so this bar over the top, that means it's repeating. It specifically means only the six is repeating in that example. The dot over the six, again, that would mean only the six is repeating. 
the arc over the six, and that would mean only the six is repeating. Or we can use the dot, 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 the ellipses, which are um, just, again, continuing that pattern, indicating that that pattern continues, the six, 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 so on and so on and so on. Alternatively, the test may specify that the number of decimal places you mention um, based on what they want their answer to be. So maybe they want one decimal place or two decimal places or whatever it may be. So just a quick review of that. If they say the tenth, the nearest tenth, that's going to be one decimal place. If they say the nearest hundredth, that's going to be two decimal places. Then we can go on from there, on and on and on. So thousandth, ten thousandth, so on and so on. Um, if you want a way to remember that, think of the word tenth is like ten, hundredth is like one hundred. The number of zeros in that number will tell you how many decimal places to round to. So one zero in the number 10 means one decimal place. Two zeros in the number 100 means two decimal places. Three zeros in 1,000, so if they ask you to round to the nearest thousandth, you're going to round to three decimal places. So let's go ahead and take a look at this example down here. So we have 1,502 divided by 20. Now, I want to point out neither one of these is a decimal, so we don't have to worry about that, but I am going to go ahead and set this up, 1,502 divided by 20. So first thing I look at is this first digit. One is not divisible by 20, so you can, again, put the zero there or not either way. Then we can go ahead and um, we can look at 15, since that did not work out. 15 is also not divisible by 20. Okay, so we can put another zero there. Then we can go on and we can look at 150. All right, and 150 is in fact divisible by 20, not perfectly, but 20 can go into 150. So if you think about it, um, 20 can be multiplied by seven to give us 140. And that's as close as we can get to 150 without going over. So that's going to tell us that 7 is going to go right here. So 7 times 20 is 140. So we subtract 140 from 150 and we get 10. Or you can go down each column either way. Now once we do that, we can bring that 2 down. Because as you can see, 20 does not divide into 10. So we bring that 2 down. Now we're looking at 102 divided by 20. So again, when we're looking at 102 divided by 20, we can go ahead and take a look and see 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. If I went any further, I'd be at 120, which is past 102. So 20 times 5 is going to get us as close to 102 as we can get at 100. So 20 times 5 tells us that 5 will be the next number because 5 times 20 is 100. And again, that's as close as we can get to 102. So we subtract 102 minus 100 gives us 2. Now, I have a number left over here. This is not a 0, so this is not one of those simple conclusions. We have, um, in fact, a number that is going to go into the decimal places. So we know this because we have a number left over. It's not a zero once we've filled all of our spots up top. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, erase the zeros. You can see that you don't necessarily need those because they're at the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and put a point zero here. If I put a point zero here, remember I need to put the point, the decimal point above that in the quotient line. So now I can go ahead and bring down that zero and I put a zero right here and now I have 20 there. So I'm looking at 20 and 20. Now this time 20 is divisible by 20 perfectly. So 20 divided by 20 is going to give us one. So we're going to put a one right here above that zero. Multiply one by 20 and you get 20. Subtract those and you get zero. So this time we know that we are finished because we have this um, decimal point filled, that place filled and we have no places left to fill in up top, and we're left with a zero down here. So we don't need to continue to put zeros at the end here once we have filled in those places and end up with a zero at the bottom. So 75.1 would be our answer on this one. Now, 
I want to go ahead and talk about what if the divisor is very complicated. So in some long division drills, the divisor will not be a number that you could easily count the number of times it divides the dividend. In such cases, the division and multiplication steps are actually replaced by repeated subtraction. So we would continue to um, subtract whatever the uh, divisor is. And when we continue to subtract that divisor, that tells us how many times it goes into that number and what number therefore goes at the top of our um, division problem in our quotient line. So let me show you what I mean by that. So 814 divided by 37, we see that there is no decimal point in either number. So we can go ahead and set this up as 814 divided by 37. Now, when we do this, we're looking just like a normal problem. 37 does not divide into 8. So then I want to go ahead and I want to look at 37 dividing into 81. If you want to put that placeholder 0 there, we can. So now we're looking at 81. Now you might realize what 37 can be multiplied by to get into 81. You might not. Okay, let's pretend for a second that you don't know off the top of your head, since 37 is a little bit bigger than some of the quotients we've been working with. It's also not um, divisible by 10 or 5, so it's a little harder to count by that number like we did with the 20 on the last problem. So instead, let's go ahead and subtract 37. So if I subtract 37 from 81, that would be one time going into 81. If I do that, I'm going to hold off on putting the one there, but I just want to show you what that's representing. If I do that, I'm going to go ahead and subtract the one minus seven, which I can't do. So I need to go ahead and cross that out. Actually, I'm going to do it off to the side. So 81 minus 37, we would cross out that one to be an 11. We have to borrow from the eight. So that will drop down to a seven. 11 minus seven is four and seven minus three is four. So we would end up with 44 here. Now, what we wanna check here is, can 37 be subtracted again? So if I can do it again and end up with a positive number, that means 37 actually goes into 81 again. And in this case, 44, if we do 44 minus 37, four minus seven, I have to make that a 14 and borrow from the four. 14 minus 7 is 7, and 3 minus 3 is 0. Okay, so that's going to be a 7 right here. Now, 37 cannot be subtracted from 7 again because we would end up with a negative number. So what this indicates when you're using this method to try to figure out how many times it goes into 81, we want to see how many times was I able to subtract that 37. So because I was able to subtract it twice, that indicates that 37 can be multiplied by 2 to get a number that will be less than 81. So 2 times 37, you can multiply that and figure that out on your own up to the side, or you can use that repeated subtraction like I showed here. Either way, you will end up with 7 right here, and then you will be able to bring down that 4 to have 74. So now we're working with 74 and 37. Again, you might not be as comfortable realizing what do I need to um, multiply 37 by to get a number that is less than 74, but as close as I can be to 74. You may be able to work with that in your head and you may not. So let's pretend for a second that you can't. So we are going to go ahead and subtract 37 once. If I do 74 minus 37, I have to change that 4 into a 14. Borrow from the 7. There we go. 14 minus 7 is 7, and 6 minus 3 is 3. So I was able to do that once, and I ended up with 37. But that means I can do it again because 37 does go into 37. So I can subtract 37 again. And when I do that, I end up with 0. And so again, I realized that I was able to subtract twice. It won't always be twice. That This one just came out to be twice. So I was able to subtract twice, and this time I was left over with zero. So I don't have to continue to subtract because I don't have any um, anything left over. So because this was twice and nothing left over, 
and I filled all my spots up at the top in the quotient line, then 22 would be your answer on this problem. So in summary, we had three common scenarios that we looked at, and I went ahead and, and included the examples that I showed earlier here, just as a quick reference. So simple conclusion, we end with a whole number and we end with zero at the bottom. So we filled all of our spots in the quotient line and we ended up with zero down at the bottom. We are done, no decimals needed, no repeating decimals, anything like that. The second scenario that we saw was when the last number of the dividend is not evenly divided by the divisor. So here we continue the division process by adding a decimal point. So originally this problem again was that 476 divided by 136. And then we added the point zero because we were not finished when we ended up with 68 down here. So we brought that zero down. Once we added it there and we included a decimal point right above that decimal point, I tacked on to the end. And then I continued the division process until I ended up with all the spots filled in the quotient line and our zero left over at the bottom. Our third Situation was a repeating or recurring decimal. So this would be if we continued the division process and potentially we may need to even add more zeros to the end from what we started with. But if we continued that division process and we ended up getting repeated numbers up at the top like 0 0.63636363, then we would write it either, for example, like this one, I would write as 0 0.63 with the bar over the top. Or I could put, um, 0.63 with the arc over the top or dots we can use or we can use dot 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 so 0.6363 dot 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 showing that repetition or potentially they could ask you to round to the nearest tenth hundredth thousandth so on and so on additionally we looked at if we have complicated divisors where it's hard to tell how many times the divisor goes into the dividend then we can use repeated subtraction and count how many times I was able to subtract to figure out what number goes up in the quotient line. So then you would just repeat that until again, you filled all the numbers in the quotient line and end up with zero at the end.